These games broke my soul, and now they must pay for their sins. Ever have those series of kinda obscure games that you've always known about, but for one reason or another never really thought about actually trying them out? Well, I have a few of those, and for the longest time, the Yakuza games were one of them. I first heard about these games like, way back in 2011. Unfortunately, I was still in my, ugh, M-rated games phase, and the fact that these games were filled with bloody violence certainly didn't help matters. But even after getting into M-rated games, I still never really thought of getting into Yakuza, so I just kind of forgot about the series entirely. Fast forward 6 or so years, and I decided to check out a Let's Play of Yakuza 0 with the intention of watching just the first episode simply because, hey, I know these games. Then I end up following the LP to its conclusion, and I may or may not have bought the game for myself and fallen in love with it. And now I want to own every Yakuza game under the sun. I need help. And since I wanted to play more Yakuza after Zero, I decided to go for the most accessible game, the PS4 remake of the very first Yakuza game titled Yakuza Kiwami. The game saw its Japanese release in 2016, and thanks to Zero revitalizing the series in the West after Dead Souls fucked everything over, Kiwami also saw a worldwide release a year later. Kiwami set out to improve on the PS2 original, as aging tends to happen to 10 plus year old games, and used the new engine from Yakuza Zero to deliver a completely new experience, even for those who had played the original back in the day. So let's see just how well Kiwami succeeded in doing that. So before I get into explaining what the story of the game is about, I have to give you a tiny spoiler warning. Since I'm going to be explaining the premise and what the story is all about, I will be discussing SOME events taking place during the first few hours of the game in detail. I won't go into any major twists of course, but if you'd prefer to go into this game as blindly as humanly possible, here's your skip time frame. With that out of the way, let's talk about the story. You play as Kazuma Kiryu, who's living the life of a Yakuza as the lieutenant advisor of the Dojima family. It's the November of 1995, and Kiryu's doing his job, making collections with his partner slash underling Shinji, beating people up, and maybe stopping a crazy knife knot somewhere along the way. And when all is done, he'll stop by a bar to have a drink with his best friend and sworn brother Nishikiyama. Life sounds pretty sweet, right? <laughs> If only it could last! So for some reason, Kiryu's other dear friend, Yumi Sawamura, is kidnapped by the Patriarch Dojima. Upon hearing this, Kiryu also learns that Nishikiyama went after them, and despite the warnings of his foster father Kazama, Kiryu heads to the same place as well. But when Kiryu arrives there, everything's already gone to shit. Dojima is dead, killed by Nishikiyama's bullet in an attempt to protect Yumi, while she herself seems to have shut down emotionally by the events and lost her memory. And since killing the boss of one's own family is obviously considered very bad, Kiryu decides to take the fall for his best friend. Nishikiyama takes Yumi and flees the scene, while Kiryu stays with a gun in hand and is arrested for Nishikiyama's crime. Fast forward 10 years of hard time, things have most certainly changed, and this is where the game really takes off. It's here where we are presented with a few mysteries that loom in the background throughout the game. First of which is Nishikiyama, who basically turned evil during the 10 long years. I mean, would you trust his hair? I wouldn't. The other mystery, or mysteries that are kinda intertwined, are the mysterious girl named Haruka, who claims to be Yumi's niece, and 10 billion yen stolen from the Tojo clan. And Haruka apparently carries a pendant that is the key to finding the money Tojo clan is after, but it's also said that the girl herself is even more valuable than the 10 billion. 
Needless to say, there are a lot of moving parts surrounding both of these conflicts. And it's this feeling of mystery that makes this story so interesting. While there is a certain point in the story that works as sort of a plot twist dump, I feel that there's enough foreshadowing and narrative hooks to keep you invested all throughout. And hey, you do get all the answers by the end of it, so... Yeah. Kiwami also adds some new exclusive scenes and dialogue. Most notably, in the beginning of the few chapters, we get a scene with Nishikiyama that shows just how and why he became evil during those 10 years. And these do such a great job of establishing Nishikiyama's role as a tragic villain. As much of an ass he can sometimes seem like, or look like during the main game, you can really feel for him through these scenes and understand his betrayal a lot better. One thing Kiwami is also good at is building tension. There are certain scenes in the game that just ooze with atmosphere, be it because of how the scene itself is directed, how it's been built up until now, or both. Seriously, the scene where Nishikiyama and Kiryu talk for the first time after 10 years is so fucking tense, you could probably call up Majima to slice the atmosphere into nicely cut pieces. However, there's one big issue I have with the game's story, and that would be its pacing. Because for some reason, there are few chapters in the game that have almost nothing to do with the overarching narrative, to the point where they actually feel more like side stories than main story chapters. And yes, there are some great moments, like Date getting a hefty amount of development, but even so, these chapters as a whole can really take you away from the main story. Which sucks, because again, it's pretty fucking good. As for the characters, the game does a great job of fleshing out each of the major ones. Kiryu is a fucking badass, and he shows some great character growth by the end of the game, plus we get to see more than one side of him, both in the main story as well as the side stories. Haruka is a precious girl who needs to be protected from all bad things, but she also has a snarkier and more cunning side, making her more than just that innocent child who needs protect. And her interactions with Kiryu are just... The florist and Date are also pretty Gucci, with some great moments in the story. Majima is a fucking psycho, but also three-dimensional as hell, and I love him. And the villains are good, for the most part. They do their job at being intimidating and... villainy. And in the case of Nishikiyama, a little bit more than that. There is one big exception, but I can't really say much about him without spoilers, so... If you played the game, you know what I'm talking about when I say the name Kyohai Jingu. To put it without too many spoilers, he's absent for way too much of the game to have any impact as a villain, so fuck him. So overall, while there are a few pitfalls that can take you away from the experience, the story of Yakuza Kiwami is honestly pretty great. It's not quite as good as Zero's, but it's feeling of mystery, great moments in terms of character and atmosphere, and mostly cohesive and well-written narrative are definitely enough for me to look over some issues. Plus, who could say no to a story with Daddy Kiryu at the helm? Huh? If there's one part of this game I have almost nothing to complain about, it's the presentation. Huh. That sounded familiar. Deja vu. I've just been in this place before. All jokes aside, Yakuza Kiwami is, both in terms of graphical and sound design, a fucking masterpiece. The game looks so good. The city lights of Kamurocho, the different effects and animations in cutscenes and during heat actions, the detail on each of the characters' models, the most important one being Kiryu's massive bulging muscles, they all look so smooth and pretty. Though if there's one little nitpick I have with the visuals, it would have to be some of the animations in the in-game cutscenes. There are multiple movements with the models that I look at and think, but he acts like this, particularly when characters talk, because they have this tendency of slightly nodding their head constantly, and it just looks really distracting. On the sound side of things, we have the sound effects, which help to give the combat the extra oomph with the crunchiness upon hitting enemies or performing heat actions, as well as the satisfying sound whenever you get a completion point or a new upgrade. 
As for the voice acting, since I'm not Japanese, I can't really judge it all that fairly, but it's solid enough all around, with special mentions going to Takaya Kuroda as Kiryu, Hidenari Ugaki as Majima, and Kazuhiro Nakaya as Nishikiyama. I'd also mention Rie Kugimiya as Haruka, but that's just because I'm biased by the cute. The soundtrack is also top-notch. People have criticized the OST for straying too far from the original PS2 game's rocking soundtrack, with having more focus on techno with the remixes, and while I would say Kiwami's soundtrack is weaker than Zero's, fuck me if there aren't some standouts in this one, and they're not only great to listen to on their own, but some of these tracks really hit home the atmosphere of each situation. Like, get over it, the theme you're listening to right now? When it plays in chapter 10. So good. So while I do have my little nitpicks and complaints about the animations and such, this game is a marvel when it comes to its presentation. The cutscenes are gorgeous, the effects are stylish, the voice acting is good, and the music is both atmospheric and a joy to listen to. So what we have here are the ingredients for a quality movie. Wait. The Yakuza games all follow a similar gameplay formula, and Kiwami is no exception. The game is an open-world beat-em-up where you roam around the nightlife city of Kamurocho and get into fights with random punks because everyone has some sort of bone to pick with Kiryu. And that's really the basics in a nutshell, but it's the little nuances that make this game. First of all, similar to Devil May Cry for example, you have four different battle styles during combat. There's Brawler, the most balanced of the styles, Rush, which is speed-based and focuses more on invasion and quick jabs, Beast, a powerful style that's good for crowd control and environmental combat, and Dragon, which is sort of a more powerful version of the Brawler, but it's pretty limited for reasons I'll get into later. Not only does using the different styles make the combat more varied since each of them fits into different situations, they can also gain more abilities through experience points. And this is something I particularly like because it gives each battle more meaning. Granted, the experience you get from normal encounters is pretty minimal compared to the cost of the abilities during the end game, but battling is still the only way to hone yourself, and I really like that. However, while the core combat is pretty fun and varied, one thing that bugs me is the enemy AI. And by that I mean it feels like a real cheating bastard sometimes. You can be in the middle of a combo and the enemy is getting staggered when it suddenly decides you're not doing that shit anymore and then you're on the ground. They also sometimes have insane reflexes where you try to hit them once or twice, they completely avoid you and get behind your back. And yes, this is present in every enemy encounter. As for the bosses, they're generally a mixed bag. You got fights like Lao Kalong, the second story fight with Majima, and the final boss, which are really great, but then there are also ones that are just plain bad and frustrating, like the fights against Shindo and Jingu. The first fight with Shibano also deserves a mention, because is this really something I should be fighting as the second boss? Now let's talk a bit about the sub-stories. There are 78 in total, and if you're going to get deep into the side content of this game, the sub-stories are what you're going to do most of the time. But most of these sub-stories are just one-and-done scam quests where Kiryu fights some con artists. And compared to the sub-stories in other Yakuza games, these just feel repetitive and a downright waste of time sometimes. I'll give some of the sub-stories credit though. There are a handful of them which are almost fully voice acted, and some of them even have main story elements to them, and shed more light on things that weren't necessarily explained. There are also sub-stories that were added for the remake, which along with the voice acted ones, are easily the best sub-stories in the game, with them being more in the style of the later games. As for the other side stuff in the game, the remake adds a lot of the mini-games from the later installments. And unfortunately, most of these are purely based on luck. So with the likes of Mesu King and Pocket Circuit, you'll most likely play them only for their respective side stories. But hey, you can also sing karaoke, go bowling, or play mahjong. If you're into that stuff, go for it! 
or, you know, just listen to Kiryu's singing voice. And now we get to the big game mechanic of the remake, the Majima Everywhere system. Remember when I said that the dragon style is pretty limited? Well, that's because after the 10 year time skip, the dragon style becomes extremely neutered, almost unusable in battle. And that's where Majima comes in. When Kiryu first arrives in Kamurocho, he encounters Majima, who completely smokes him. After seeing that Kiryu's skills have withered in prison, Majima decides to help Kiryu to awaken the sleeping dragon by stalking him and challenging him into fights throughout the city in the craziest ways possible. And to be honest, the whole system is kind of a mixed bag. On the other hand, I love seeing Majima's crazy stunts and interactions with Kiryu, and his fights are a great way of earning experience. And I really like how the skills for your dragon style are directly tied to the system, making it that much more essential. However, the fights themselves are kinda eh. Fighting Thug Majima is fun enough, the slugger can be a little annoying, but nothing too bad, but I dread going up against Breaker Majima, because his fights tend to take fucking forever with his stun-locking spin attacks that can't be blocked. Mad Dog Majima is kinda bullshit too, but since it starts showing up only near the end game, it's a bit more manageable. The whole random factor of the system also bugs me, because you could be on your way to continue the story, completing some side stuff, or trying to get heals, when whoops, it's Majima with his 7 health bars! And the system can take away some impact from the moments Majima appears in the main story. Since you encounter him so often in the city, it can make them feel less special. Wasn't a problem for me personally, but I can definitely see it bugging some people, especially if they played the original PS2 game. So overall, while I do have my fair share of problems with Kiwami's gameplay, it's still pretty solid. You can have a lot of fun with the combat, as well as the Majima Everywhere system, and maybe some of the problems won't bug you as much as they did me because you aren't bad at video games. And I can guarantee that with the content this game has available, you won't be getting bored at the very least. So Yakuza Kiwami is definitely a video game. It's not a stretch to say that this game is a mess. What with combining the original Yakuza from the PS2, problems and all, with the newer style of 4, 5, and 0, and not mixing up perfectly all the time. And while I do still feel mixed in a lot of areas about the game, I have great respect for the things it does really well. And I do wholeheartedly recommend playing Kiwami, even in spite of its shortcomings. I'd recommend playing Zero first, as it makes some of the story scenes added in the remake that much more powerful, but since this is still the game that started it all, jumping straight into this one wouldn't cost you too much. It isn't quite as good as Zero in my experience, and I can definitely see why the first game is considered to be one of the weakest in the series, but as someone who's only now getting into the series, I really enjoyed myself. Just have better pacing and less fights with Majima next time, okay? I'm finished up, and Haruka calling Kiryu Uncle Kaz at the end of the game has to be at least in the top 10 cutest things in anything ever. You can change my mind. In the future, we'll decide if there's a hero buried deep inside. I wanna be a hero. Pokemon! Hello everyone! I hope you enjoyed me rambling about half-naked Japanese men duking it out on the streets of Tokyo. I mean, they're not shirtless all the time, but... 
Anyway, thanks for watching! Some videos are in the works, a smaller countdown and a normal length countdown, and I hope I can get them both out by the end of the year. There are still a few months left in 2018, so maybe I can actually fulfill that promise this time.